The Speed Chess Championship Final was brought to you by On Juno. Sign up for a free checking account at onjuno.com to receive 5% cash back and a 2.15% bonus on deposits. It's your interest. Take it. As always, chess.com is leading the way in online chess events, and the Speed Chess Championships is a fantastic event gathering all the top players in one place. We're going to have a look at Hikaru Nakamura's five top moments from the championship. So put your seatbelts on, sit back, chill out, and enjoy. This first example is Hikaru versus Wesley So, who seems to be improving a lot at the moment. By the way, have you hit the like and subscribe button? I'll get in trouble if you haven't. And in this position, Hikaru finishes off the game in some style. And it's not all about flashy tactics, it's about dominating the position. Here, the knight jumps into g5 with check. And it's funny how Wesley So's position just collapses here. This knight has to really be eliminated, and then after f takes, you can see the rook opens its way up. The king slips to e7, and now bishop takes g4. And this is more of a positional example, but the pressure against the pawn on e6 is great. And with the f6 square now being available to the white rook, Hikaru finishes this game in some style. Rook to d2 comes in. At least Wesley is able to swap off that one rook. But now rook d6 played, trying to gain some counterplay, and we see another clever maneuver. Rook to h3. Wesley gets his rook in. But after rook takes h7 check, and now rook to h6, pawn to h3, we can see Hikaru's well on his way to winning because he's going to grab this pawn with two connected passed pawns. So an example there of how you need to understand transpositions to good endings to be a player of Hikaru's quality and a very smooth win against Wesley So. Well, Wesley So's not going to like me as he's on the receiving end yet again. And in this position, it really reminds me of a statement from Philidor that pass pawns must be pushed. At the end of the day, in the ending, the main objective is to queen your pawn, get it to the other end of the board. And so many players just forget this and they mess about. But here Hikaru gets on with things with c4. And what makes this particularly great, this idea, is the use of little tactics to achieve tactical gains. I'm going to see if you can spot the tactic that Hikaru must have seen in this position. King f2, trying to bring the king around to stop the pawn. And now the pawn continues its march. And now bishop d3. And it kind of seems here that white might be all right. But one another thing I'd like to point out is that two bishops are generally better than a rook. But in the ending, the rook can outplay the two bishops. And what move now was Hikaru's intention? Pause if you need to. C2, there's no stopping Charlie the C pawn racing forwards to victory. And this is the main point. Without this move, white could even be better because the king was coming around to grab that pawn. But this pawn cannot really be taken because black's going to win the exchange. Wesley tried bishop e3, but now another very accurate move, rook a1, and now Hikaru's going to win the exchange as he's still got this tactic or the pawn is simply going to promote. And the exchange up, Hikaru went on to win in some style. So do you remember little tactics are always and often in positions when the stuff going on and you've got to look out for these tactics to achieve your positional goals. And this is something Hikaru often sees in a split second. He's one of the quickest guys in the world at spotting tactics. The next victim on Hikaru's list is the strong Frenchman MVL who recently beat Magnus Carlsen. And in this one, Hikaru tricks MVL into grabbing a hot potato of a pawn. Oof! Burning his hand as he takes that pawn. And we see this after the move e5, a very aggressive move from Hikaru. And this is a typical idea in such positions. Opening up your light square bishop to aim at black's king. In such positions, this bishop is a key attacking piece. Knight d5 occurs, and now white needs more pieces in the attack. And he does this by bringing the knight to e4. And 
here it's a very tricky position, but MVL had to try some moves such as g6. Instead, he grabs this pawn. Hikaru takes back, and now he wins the pawn on e5, but it comes at a cost. Can you see Hikaru's idea? Well, first of all, he takes on e5, and because of the great position of his rook, it's time to unleash hell. Knight g5, and again, it's this bishop, which is the key piece. The queen is attacked, it has to move, and now simply bishop takes h7, and queen h5. And out of nowhere, Hikaru has a deadly attack. The main threat is simply bishop g6, discovered check. I call that a bit of an ambush. Rawr! And then the queen comes in to h7. Black can't really defend with queen h6 because the bishop on c1 also participates in the attack. And knight to f7 check unleashes that one, winning the queen, winning the game. So if Hikaru offers you a pawn, be careful. If something's too good to be true, it's normally not true. Just remember that little one. I've fallen for that many times in my own life. MVL, the target again. And one thing we can see here is just how strong the queen and knight can coordinate together. Queen and knight are a famous attacking sort of combination. And if you can ever get them working around your opponent's king, your opponent's in big trouble. Another thing that really causes white many issues here is Harry the H-pawn. Harry the H-pawn is cramping white's king and just see how Harry takes an important part in this. First of all, Hikaru jumps in with knight to e3, never one to miss an opportunity. You don't want to be defending against Hikaru. One of the issues white has is that his queen is so far away from the action, tucked over there on the other side of the board. The queen now tries to get back, but it's black to move first. And a very class move here, d5. Blocking the queen's way over to the king side. And when the knight moves, we now have queen to e1, delicately maneuvering nearer to the black king. The main threat is queen g3 using Harry. Nice one, Harry. And then queen takes g2 checkmate. There's not really any way to stop this. And after queen d3, Hikaru closes in and MVL has to resign. Now, I would like to say a quick word and a quick word from our sponsors on Juno now who are helping put the Speed Chess Championships together. Today's Speed Chess Championship video is brought to you by On Juno. With On Juno, you can create a free checking account in under five minutes, and that's pretty fast. They don't have physical branches, so you don't need to pay their executives millions of dollars in overhead each year. Plus, those savings are passed on to you, the consumer, in the form of 5% cash back on brands you love and use every day, including Amazon, Netflix, Uber, DoorDash, and more. Anjuno offers an industry-leading bonus rate of 2.15% on deposits, helping you grow your money, while Anjuno helps the game of chess grow. Backed by top companies like Sequoia and Polychain, Anjuno's clean interface and easy-to-use features let you take full advantage of the most powerful checking account on the planet. Click the link in the description below to sign up for an account today and receive 10% cash back on Chess.com memberships. Anjuno, it's your interest. Take it. In this last example, MVL is the target again. Sorry, MVL. I love you, really. And we have this kind of normal-looking position here where Hikaru just plays bishop e7. But now MVL plays a critical mistake. Some simple move like bishop d2 is fine, trying to get the rook opposite Hikaru's queen, but instead b3 is played. One thing that top players are so good at doing is spotting any weakness that their opponent makes and taking advantage of it immediately. Can you see how Hikaru took advantage of this weakening move, weakening the knight on c3? What is the correct tactical response? Well, we should note that white's queen is the only piece defending the knight, so if we get the queen away, we're doing pretty well. Knight d7, and all of a sudden, white's in a world of pain. If he goes queen d4, the bishop slips to f6, winning the game. If the queen goes to a5, we have the very delicate move, b6. And this will give a good advantage. Maybe this was the best try with queen here coming up. 
But I think MVL was relying on the move rook d7, trying to get some compensation for the exchange. But again, we see Hikaru's brilliant and quick calculation ability. A lot of players here would take on d7, allowing queen takes g7, a little bit messy. But Hikaru just plays around the rook on d7 with bishop f6. Rook e7, the rook's going to be lost anyway. And after king takes e7, bishop a3, king e8, white's going to be losing another piece. There's not enough counterplay, so he resigns. And uh, again, it's just spotting these opportunities that makes Hikaru such a sharp and strong player. Number one blitz player in the world. He's going to be a hard man to stop. Will he win the whole thing? He's bookies favourites. Make sure you like and subscribe to this video. Thank you so much for coming along here. And hopefully I'll be back soon.